Hey folks, it's been over a year since we've had any kind of real trade setup happening for XRP. And yet right now it's happening. It's happening right before our eyes, real time. If you're interested in trading XRP and thinking, is it maybe the right time to buy? Check it out. I'll teach you all you need to know right now. Coming up, here we go. Hello, hello everybody. It is Jeremy Whaley here from Trade Maestro. You can find us over at trademaestro.com. If you're not already subscribed, get yourself subscribed here to the channel and go over to our website, trademaestro.com and uh, sign up over there for our mailing list and all that great stuff. So you can get all of our updates because we got some incredible opportunities happening in the market right now. I know it's been a big bear market. It's been a huge bear market for crypto. Been going on for over a year, basically. And uh, now the stock market's been crashing for the last nine months. And a lot of people are just saying, is it all going to hell in a handbasket? Should we just walk away? And the answer is no. After great setback, comes great setup. In fact, one of the best years of my life trading was in 2000, uh, in 2020, after the, the um, COVID crash. We had huge discounts on trades. We were able to get in and make some huge profits. And that same kind of opportunity is coming up right now, only it's gonna be even bigger. So that's happening across all financial markets. Let everything flush out and there'll be some really big opportunities. But some of those opportunities are already starting to come to fruition. And one of those is XRP. Now, if you haven't seen it already, I did another market update for the crypto markets uh, that's going out basically the same time as this video. And uh, you should go check that out because I talk about um, different phases of, of trend reversals. And I specifically talked about an accumulation phase. And I'm gonna hit on that briefly right here. But if you wanna go see that video, go check that one out as well. And I talked about why Bitcoin and Ethereum and some of these other trades are getting set up. But XRP is unique because it's actually setting up right now. It's already set up and we've got some trade opportunities. So I want to go back in time just a little bit. Back in July, I started this trade setup and you're going to see, I'm going to draw some stuff in here. This is called an accumulation period. This is the first thing that happens before a trade that's been in a big bear market reverses. So let me zoom out just a little bit here and just put some perspective here. By the way, if you've been trading and when you come to your charts, you're looking at it like this. If this is how you look at your charts, you will forever be confused because you got to keep a big picture perspective of where you are. And if you come back all the way to 2021, uh, you'll see when XRP was peaking out here at almost $2 per token. Come on, pen, work for me here. There we go. It was peaking back here at almost $2 a token. We had a huge sell-off followed by a pretty big rally that happened July and August of 2021. And then we really put that uh, top in right here around $1.30. And we've really just been in a bear market ever since. So that's a pretty big sell-off to go from at one point $1.90 um, all the way down to, um, you know, where we've been, which was, you know, around 30 cents. And that's where we've been putting the support in. Okay. Now with that as kind of a little bit of a historical background, uh, back in July, I showed you a signal we were getting. I talked about this in one of my videos, and this is called bullish divergence. And this was telling us that the trend was about to reverse. And basically in a bullish divergence, what you have is you have this, in this case, the crypto, I just about said stock, but in this case, the crypto is putting in lower lows, but our oscillator, this is our stochastics oscillator here, is putting in higher lows. And whenever you have that, it's not a signal of a reversal per se. It's a signal that the previous trend is ending. And so we did have that change of trend. We moved from a bearish trend over to basically what we would refer to as a sideways trend. And um, what this really is from a functional standpoint is something we call an accumulation period. So what you've got here in this accumulation period is you have informed traders that are accumulating new positions and they are actually dumping money into the trade and they're starting to pick up positions. So all that public participation that, that freaked out and basically sold in a panic back here, all of those people, they're sitting on the sidelines having given up or in some cases they're holding um, and just hodling, but but they're not you're not actively buying. You don't see a whole lot of buying pressure happening. Okay, well that's starting to change. So back in July when we started seeing these signals, I did do a trade setup. Uh, I did a trade setup with an entry in here at about 
for uh, 39 cents. Uh, right up in here, we never closed above that trigger, so there was no no real trade to be taken until just about a couple weeks ago here. And what you see is you see the breakout and now the pullback, and now we're starting to see the continuation. That's why I'm excited because I think that the future for XRP could be really, really bright. Now, before I go into my analysis on this, I'm just going to say some, some of you are going to hate on me. And some of you are going to hate on me because you just don't like the way that I'm going to tell you XRP is going to flow. Some of you are going to come in here and you're going to be like, XRP is going to go to $1,000. Others are going to say it's going to go to $10,000. And others are going to say it's going to be $100,000. And it's going to be worth maybe a million dollars. I don't know. Because there's a really weird cult following on XRP. Now, I want to be clear. I like XRP. I own XRP. So full disclosure, I already own XRP. And I've, I've been buying XRP since it was in the... Um, like sub 20 cents range. I mean, I've been buying it for a long time. So I've been a fan of XRP for a really, really long time. But as a trader, I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing a trade setup that you would approach this as, as a trader. And I just want to say something about those really big projections. Uh, I don't think they're substantiated. See, right now, right now, somebody's just hit the dislike button. You're going to start excoriating me in the comments. That's fine. Throw your arrows at me. As a trader, what I want to do is I want to take the most predictable part of the trade because we actually took some profits at the top on XRP. We took out enough profits when we were at the top that we paid for our entire position in XRP a couple of times. And now I have all that cash to re-enter the trade. So what if it does go to $100? What if it does go to $1,000 or $10,000 or whatever? Great. I've got the money to play with. But in the meantime, when we went to $1.90 and then we crashed to 30 cents, we were also able to take some profit off the table, let a little bit stay there just in case, but we were able to take some profit off the table enough that we could pay for the entire position. So it's a risk-free position at this point. Does that make sense to you? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a regular trade setup the way that I would approach it as a trader. And I'm going to give you some targets here. And some of you are going to be really mad at me for my targets. That's okay. You just be mad. It's all right. I'll be making money while you're mad. You can decide which one you want to be. Do you want to be rich or you want to be right? I want to be both, Jimmy. No, you're not. No, you're not. All right, so here we go. Once you get a breakout from an accumulation period, here's the next thing that's going to happen. I'm going to draw this on the screen first. First thing that's going to happen is you have the accumulation period. It breaks out, and then it will come back and test that old resistance line as a new support. And once it's tested, if it holds it will break out into the new trend. This is where I do believe we are right now for XRP. So what you're gonna see here, as I'm drawing on the screen, there's your accumulation period. Okay, we've had the breakout and we've come back and tested it and now we're starting to continue. Now, if I zoom in a little bit here so you can really see this, which I'm gonna to try to do, uh-oh, wrong way. Okay, so if I zoom in on this, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see as I continue to zoom, there we go. You're going to see that we are above the moving averages. Check. That's the first signal. The moving averages are starting to separate. Check. That's the second signal. There's also something we call a moving average cross. That happened a long time ago. Check. Okay. And we've already come back and tested this old support as, or old resistance as a new support. Check, check. Check, 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 check. We got everything. Now you come down, you look at your stochastics and what is it doing? It is preparing. It is crossing right now. Check, check, check. We got all the checks happening. We're going in the right direction. Some of you have also seen me use my proprietary indicator. I call it the JMAC. Let's see if I can open it up here. You will notice that we had a peak. We have pulled back. We're looking for one dark green bar. I know I just drew it, drew it in blue, but we're looking for one dark green bar, and that will be a full confirmation that this trade is moving. So boom, there you have it. We've done the analysis. I could go a little bit further, but that's all we need to do for now. Now the question is, what is the new trade setup and where is this trade going? So that's what I'm going to do for you right now. Now, you need to understand, when I approach the market, I do not do it like your typical crypto trader. Typical crypto people, frankly, and I mean this respectfully, they're not very good traders. Actually, they're horrible traders. They're pretty good at buying random ideas and some of them working. And because the crypto market has been, you know, 
just the wild, wild west. A lot of people have made a lot of money trading crypto, but they haven't really been trading it as a trader. If you want to trade it as a trader, you got to be a little bit more intelligent about it. And the more participants we have in the crypto market, and especially the more bear markets we have, the more intelligent you're going to have to be to be a crypto trader. So I'm going to teach you how we as traders approach all trades, and we're going to apply it here directly to crypto. So the first thing you need to know is historically, for people who are trying to buy based on a value, what they're trying to do is guess the bottom. And so they'll try to get in at a support. They'll try to figure out where's the bottom going to be. And they're really jumping in and, and frankly, just kind of hanging on for dear life. If we just wrote an acronym for that, we just call it HODL. They're HODLing, right? They're holding on for dear life as they're buying the trade, in this case, the, the crypto. And um, they're just hoping that it goes up. Okay, well, what happens if it goes down? Well, if it goes down, most people just HODL because they're like, well, eventually maybe it'll come back up. And that's the way that most people approach investing. That's the way most people approach crypto. Unfortunately, it's the way most people approach stocks as well. The correct way to approach it, the way that I approach it, the way that traders approach it, is we have a trading plan. I'll give that to you right now. There's three steps to a trading plan. Number one, you gotta have your entry price. I'm just gonna abbreviate that E. Actually, I'll write it up here. You gotta have your entry. You gotta have your target. This is where we think the trade is going to go. And you gotta have your stop. And your stop price is where we're going to get out of the trade in the event the trade goes bad. If it goes the wrong way, what the stop does is it limits our risk. So here's how we measure risk. The risk is the difference in the entry and the stop. We'll just put an R here for risk, okay? Now, the difference in the target in the entry, we're gonna call that an R as well. That's for your reward, okay? So what we're trading is we're going to trade the difference in our risk and our reward. And when you can keep your risk and your reward in a good measurement where they're, they're favorable for each other, you can actually trade. You can, you can only make money a third of the time and still make money. That made no sense. You can only have one out of every three trade be a winning trade and still make money if you know how to manage your risk the correct way. Okay, so this is a very important piece to my trade management. Now, the next thing I want to teach you really fast in this trade setup is how I get into it. I don't go try to buy whenever we're at a low. I don't do that. Most people try to do that. What I do is I buy on an uptick. You think, well, that, that's just crazy, Jeremy. Why would you do that? Here's why I do it. Because once we get the momentum going in the direction of the trade, I want to make profit as quickly as possible. You're not going to do that if it's at the bottom. Some people were back here buying when it was um, however cheap that was, 30 cents. <coughs> Excuse me. Some people were back here buying at 30 cents. Well, that's really great, but look, you're holding through all this. And for more aggressive trades, especially if you're trading options and stuff that has time decay tied to it, you, you've wasted all your time waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks for this trade to ever come back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy in the direction of the momentum and I'm going to get out at my target. And when I get out, I'm done. There, the trade's done. Then I'm going to wait for another pullback. I'll trade whenever it starts moving that direction again. So to do that, I'm going to use a trigger. And with a trigger, I'm waiting for the trade to move beyond the trigger. And I actually buy at a higher price. People criticize it and say, well, you didn't get in cheap enough. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm still making money on it, first of all. And secondly, I make money faster, okay? I don't really care so much about getting the cheapest price. All I care about doing is having a predictable trade that is a repeatable trade, okay? And if you can do that, then you're actually gonna make a lot more money over time. So let's get in here and I'll show you how I'm gonna do this. I'm looking for this trade to break above about this price range right here, which you'll notice is in line with our recent swing highs. It's also a purple line. Uh, which means it was a resistance at some point. And so that's going to be, just above that's going to be my entry price. So I'm going to use this little tool over here. It's a trade setup tool. And I'm going to put a little entry price right there. That price comes in around 53 cents, 53 cents, uh, 663. So however you want to define that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my risk. And to define my risk, I'm going to come up here just under my 10 period moving average, which is going to put my stop for this trade right around 46 and a half cents okay so we'll put uh, 0.465 will be my stop my entry on this is 0.536 okay now what about the target well all of these purple lines are targets and I'm going to come all the way up to the yellow line because that was the one we had previously established that's right around 59 cents 
that will be our ultimate target on this trade. Now, I know some of you are like, oh, Jeremy, it's going to go to $1,000. No, it's not. Not this week. All right. So 59.1 will be our target. 0.591. That's 59.1 cent. However you choose to, to refer to that as. And all of these purple lines along the way are targets. So there's one right here at 60 cents. And uh, you know what? I totally am off on those numbers. Forgive me. Let me fix that for you. Problem is I don't have my glasses on and uh, I couldn't read that. That is 89 cents, not 59. It's 89 cents, 89.1. All right. So 60 cents will be our next target. Then 70 cents, then 84, and then ultimately 89 cents will be our targets for this trade. Now, if you do a little bit of risk reward analysis on that, you will realize that if we get all the way to our ultimate target here, it's going to give you a almost a $5 to one reward to risk ratio. That means for every dollar you're putting at risk, you're making $5 on this trade. Are you willing to take that kind of a risk to make that kind of reward? The answer should be absolutely. Really fast. Um, for those of you who know what I'm talking about here, I'll just hit these other numbers. Your first target is a is less than a one to one risk reward. Your second target is a 2.4 to one. Your third target is a 4.2 to one risk reward. And your ultimate target is a five to one risk to reward ratio. All right, folks, this is how I approach doing my trade setups. This is a trade setup that I'm actively going to be managing with XRP. I'm not saying that you should do it. This is for educational purposes only. I'm teaching you how to trade. Um, but I know a lot of you are really excited about XRP. A lot of you have been hanging on, waiting for it to do something exciting. And here's how I approach it. You can choose to mimic it or not. I don't really care what you do with your XRP. But the way that I'm going to approach it is the way that I've just laid it out for you here. One day, perhaps XRP gets to some of those big numbers. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm not saying it's not going to. Uh, but you'll never, I don't think, ever find me just buying any crypto and holding it for dear life, hoping, wishing, and praying that it goes up because that's not how I trade the market. And I've been trading since the late 90s, since 1999, actually, is when I placed my very first trade. I've traded stocks, I've traded options, I've traded futures and Forex, and um, now we're moving over here to crypto. And I just approach it the same way. I just approach crypto the exact same way that I approach stocks and options and everything else that we've traded over the years. And um, it works. It works because this is the way that traders trade the market. And the more that you have real traders that get into the crypto market, not just, um, you, I don't want to call them friends, but, you know, people that are younger that are just buying because it looks like something new and cool. Well, that's really cool in theory. But the problem is it's not educated and it's not disciplined. You want to be a good trader. You need to learn how to be a disciplined trader. So this is the kind of stuff that you need to do. So uh, mark it up in your chart. Um, if it never hits the trigger, the trade's not active. Once it does hit the trigger, you will start to adjust your stops along the way, but that's for a different day. So I hope you've learned a lot in this video. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and get yourself subscribed here at Trade Maestro on YouTube and of course over at trademaestro.com so that you can you know, get on the mailing list and get added to everything that we do and get the updates that we send out. Uh, some days I send out quite a few videos and some days I don't send out anything. So you never know. That's why you got to be subscribed. So you get those little alerts. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Thanks again for watching. Hope you guys have learned a lot. I'll look forward to the next time. And until then, happy trading to all of you. We'll talk to you soon.